In this lesson, we're talking about myocardial infarction, which is a sudden restriction of blood supply to a portion of the heart. This causes ischemia and death to muscle tissue. Let's go into this in a little bit more, more detail. When you think about myocardial infarction, or MI is how you're going to hear people say it, I want you to think vascular disorder. If you remember from the anatomy module, we have coronary arteries that supply the heart with blood. So the exit right here, they're supplying the heart with blood. If one of these vessels gets blocked with plaque or a clot, as you can see in this image here, it can occlude blood flow. As you can see here, the blood cannot flow past the occlusion and therefore the muscle beyond the occlusion is dying. And you can see this nice healthy uh, muscle here and then you can see this dead heart muscle beyond the occlusion. It can't get oxygen. The problem is the vessels. So think blocked vessels, blocked blood flow. How are our patients going to present? The classic sign is crushing chest pain and radiating arm pain. Okay, so if we have our patient here, let's say here's our patient. So usually right in the middle of the chest, they're going to have this crushing chest pain. They may even say they feel like an elephant is sitting on the chest or like a vice grip is on their chest or it's just this heavy weight right on their chest. If the chest pain is relieved by nitrates, we call it angina. But if this is an MI, the nitrates will be completely ineffective. The pain can also radiate to the left arm. So they might feel this pain kind of coming uh, into the left arm here. Okay, coming from this point right here, the back or the shoulder. In women, it can also present different, differently. Sometimes they might have uh, epigastric pain or they might feel like they are having heartburn or they might even complain of jaw pain. So those are kind of some of the differences we'd see between a male patient uh, and a female patient who might be experiencing uh, uh, MI. Patients will often have shortness of breath. They'll be pale, diaphoretic, nauseous. They're just going to be terrified. They're going to be very anxious. Imagine having this crushing chest pain that just feels like, I mean, they really believe that like an elephant is sitting on their chest. And so they're starting to experience all this uh, nauseous, this anxiety, this diaphoretic, they're going to be pale and, and they're going to be very short of breath. Many times they're going to uh, have palpitations as well. And it's important to note that uh, the pain shouldn't be sharp. It shouldn't get worse with breathing or be related to eating at all. When your patient presents with these symptoms, do a thorough pain assessment, get a set of vital signs, listen to heart sounds and call the provider. So assess for pain, get a set of vital signs, listen to heart sounds and call the healthcare provider. You need to do this all immediately. Okay. Now that provider is likely going to order a set of cardiac enzymes and a 12 lead EKG. So they're probably going to order cardiac enzymes, which we'll talk about in a second, and a 12-lead EKG, and they'll probably order some meds, which we will also talk about uh, in a second. So first of all, there's a couple different kinds of MI, okay? There's two types. You have an ST elevation MI, or STEMI, and you have a non-ST elevation MI, or N-STEMI. Both are going to have the crushing chest pain. Both are going to present with elevated cardiac enzymes. ST elevation... And what you're going to see on the EKG, we're going to look over one here in just a minute, uh, is going to be very specific to where the damage is in the heart. So having this ST elevation will actually show us what's happening in the heart and what's going on. Now, a STEMI indicates complete occlusion of the coronary artery and requires immediate intervention, okay? This is an emergency. This requires immediate intervention. Now, the intervention is either going to be thrombolytics or surgical intervention. Most of the time, these patients will be in the cath lab within just uh, 60 minutes of arriving at the hospital. That's really the goal. Um, and they're going to go for angioplasty and possible stenting. Now, with the non-ST elevation MI, they don't have the uh, ST elevation in their EKG. So it's very nonspecific changes. Uh, they might even experience ST depression or uh, uh, T-wave inversion. So... These patients need pharmacologic therapy, uh, and some of those pharmacologic therapies we might provide for them would be nitrates, beta blockers, et cetera, 
and they'll likely go to the cath lab within 24 to 48 hours, depending on how stable they are. Now your provider is likely going to order cardiac enzymes. Now you've probably heard that before, troponin I, CKMB, and myoglobin. All right, these are a few kind of enzymes we look at to determine cardiac muscle damage. There's also troponin T and CK, but the main one you're gonna be looking at is actually gonna be this troponin I right here. It is the most specific to cardiac damage, okay? I want you to remember that. This is the most specific to cardiac damage, is this troponin and the troponin I. So it peaks within about 12 hours. So during the first 12 to 16 hours or so, you're gonna be drawing cardiac enzymes, you're gonna be drawing troponins every couple hours to watch this lab value kind of peak up. And so it's really important that you monitor this one and you're gonna be drawing it quite a bit um, with your patient, okay? Now CKMB is less specific than troponin, but it will give you uh, an idea of cardiac muscle damage as long as there is no skeletal muscle damage present. So if your patient was in like a crushing injury or had other uh, muscle damage, you're gonna see this uh, elevated as well. It peaks a little bit earlier within 10 to 24 hours. Lastly is myoglobin. It's the least specific, but because it peaks so quickly, uh, we can see it really, uh, really quickly in our patients. So it's useful to determine the severity of damage early, uh, earlier than we would see in troponin I or CKMB. So when we look at a 12 VD kg and see ST elevation, we can determine where the infarction is occurring. Now, we don't talk that much or teach that much about 12 lead EKGs in the academy because it's not something you need to be thoroughly uh, versed in as a new grad. Um, and if you begin to work in an ICU or in a cardiac floor, you would need to know this. However, we do want you guys to be able to look at one, and have a general idea of what's going on. Now you can see you have 12 leads laid out in three by four. So one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. Leads two, three, and AVF. So this is the reading from leads two, three, and AVF are your inferior leads. An easy way to remember this is that it looks like a boot or a foot and foot, boot, inferior. Okay, so this is our inferior leads. V1 through V4. So what we're doing is we're just kind of tracing where those uh, readings are. Okay, so V1 through V4 are the anterior leads. Okay, now this might be kind of hard to see, but um, I want to remember this is that it kind of looks like the front of a shirt. See, if I kind of do it like this, it kind of looks like a shirt maybe a little bit. See, kind of are your anterior leads. Your shirt's on the front, anterior, front. AVR doesn't give us anything uh, specific enough for our reading, so we kind of just cross it out and we don't really uh, worry about it. Then the ones we have left over are one, AVL, V5, and V6. So these are kind of our leftover ones. Leftover equals lateral. So boot equals inferior. Uh, the shirt one here equals anterior. Leftover equals lateral. So that'd be a lateral MI. That's where we would uh, we would see it. Now, when you have a STEMI or an ST elevation MI, it's going to look something like this. You'll notice you have ST elevation in leads two, three, and AVF. Those are your inferior leads. Remember our little boot. So this is showing us that we have an inferior uh, MI. Now it's important to be able to see this because inferior MIs require different treatment than other forms of myocardial infarction. So you can see here where the ST elevation occurred, right? We can see the ST elevation here in each of these tracings. And when we see ST elevation in two, three, and AVF, that's meaning it's an inferior MI. What are our interventions for this patient, for a patient with inferior MI? In angina lesson, we talked a little bit about MONA, morphine, oxygen, nitrates, and aspirin. Now you can also grab the cheat sheet to uh, have with you in clinical. So just remember, uh, morphine for pain and decreased workload, oxygen for oxygenation, nitrates for vasodilation, and aspirin for antiplatelet action.
But here's where it's important to have a general knowledge of 12 leading EKGs. I said before that inferior MIs get treated differently. That's because they tend to involve the right side of the heart. So inferior uh, MIs involve the right side of the heart. All right, well, why do we care about that? Okay, why is that important? Now, if you remember from the hemodynamic lesson, the right side is where we measure preload. So these inferior my patients are highly dependent on preload, right? So if we vasodilate them, if we vasodilate them, they lose their preload. They can bottom out their blood pressure and lose their cardiac output. If they don't have cardiac output, they're not in good shape at all. So that's why morphine and nitrates are actually contraindicated in inferior MI. Instead for inferior MI, we give lots of fluid to boost their preload and improve their cardiac output. So we'll do morphine, oxygen, nitrates, aspirin for angina and for other uh, types of MI, but for inferior MI, because they need this preload so much, we don't want to dilate uh, these patients. We want to make sure they maintain their preload. Uh, so we're actually going to be contraindicated uh, to give the morphine and the nitrates. Myocardial infarction is a vascular disorder. Blocked vessels means blocked blood flow. Remember the delivery truck driver analogy. If they can't get through, the packages don't get delivered. What are we trying to deliver? Healthy oxygen and nutrients to the heart. Second, when you have a patient with chest pain, do a thorough nursing assessment and do this immediately and anticipate ordering labs, which be your cardiac enzymes, uh, meds, and, and getting a 12 lead EKG done quickly. Then possibly you might be taking them um, to the cath lab. Third, check your 12 lead for an inferior MI and advocate for your patient to receive fluids instead of morphine and nitrates. Important for you to remember that. Now, remember that a STEMI is an emergency and needs intervention immediately. Need thrombolytics and PCI immediately. All right. And finally, always remember morphine, oxygen, nitrates, and aspirin. Fluids in inferior MI, all right? Mona plus fluids. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.